Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockChalk01, and welcome as I give you my KU football predictions for the 2024 season. Last season, KU went 9-4 and four and won the guaranteed rate bowl against UNLV. Can Kansas do better, in my opinion? Well, let's find out. The season opener for Kansas is on Thursday, August 29th at Children's Mercy Park as Kansas would host Lindenwood. This one, I think, will be KU's easiest cakewalk. I think the Jayhawks will dominate the Lions, who have just joined the FBS ranks. So, yeah, this should be an easy one. Give me KU winning this one 52-7. KU will start the year 1-0. The first Saturday game for the Jayhawks is on Saturday, September 7th, as KU travels to Champaign, Illinois, to take on the Illinois Fighting Illini. This is a rematch from the year prior as KU won that one 34-23. I think the game will be closer because KU is on the road, but ultimately I think KU pulls it out in the end. Give me KU winning this one 34-30. KU improves to 2-0. KU returns home on Friday, September 13th for a rematch of the Guaranteed Rate Bowl against UNLV at Children's Mercy Park. However, this time I think it will be different from the 13 point advantage that KU had the year prior. I see KU improved from the year prior and I see that UNLV kind of slipped a bit. So ultimately, give me KU winning this one a little bit more comfortably 41 to 24. KU finishes the non-conference slate undefeated. They are now 3-0. The Big 12 opener for the Hawks is on Saturday, September 21st, as Kansas will travel to Morgantown, West Virginia to take on the Mountaineers. This will be the first time in two years that these two have met, as KU shocked America the last time it happened by winning the game 55-42. However, I think the Mountaineers are coming prepared for revenge, and ultimately I think they give KU their first defeat. Give me the Mountaineers winning 38-28. KU falls in the conference opener. They are now 3-1. KU moves across the pond on Saturday, September 28th to Arrowhead Stadium as they take on the TCU Horn Frogs. The last time these two met was in 2022 with TCU getting the advantage by 6. However, I think TCU regressed from that year and KU has improved a lot since. And I think KU edges out the Horn Frogs to pick up their first conference win. Give me KU winning this one in a close one, 35 to 31. KU improves to 4 and 1. KU will travel west on Saturday, October 5th to take on a newbie in the Big 12 and that is the Arizona State Sun Devils in Tempe. The last time KU played in Tempe was in 2008 as KU beat Minnesota in the Inside Bowl. This time they face off against Arizona State in a Big 12 Conference game and all I know is that Arizona State stinks but KU doesn't really do well in road games so I think this will be a lot closer than people will think but I think KU holds on to win. Gimme KU winning this one 40-28. KU improves to five and one. After a bye week, KU returns to Arrowhead Stadium on Saturday, October 19th to face off against the Houston Cougars. The last time these two met was in 2022, and KU beat the Cougars in Houston 48 to 30. This time, under new head coach Willie Fritz, I think Houston struggles, and I think KU really, really gets a hold of this one, and. Since bowl eligibility implications are on the line, I think KU holds it out and wins. Give me KU winning this one comfortably 42-21. KU is now bowl eligible after this victory. They improve to 6-1. One of the biggest, if not the biggest game on the Big 12 football slate is on Saturday, October 26th as KU travels to Manhattan, Kansas to take on in-state rival K-State in the Dillon Sunflower Showdown. This game might host college game day. Just putting it out there. Last year, K-State won a close one 31-27 in Lawrence. 
However, this year things will be different as K-State will have Avery Johnson instead of Will Howard. KU should have Jalen Daniels instead of Cole Ballard. And the game is going to be in Manhattan. That's going to be the big difference. And ultimately, I think K-State gets this one because the game is at the bill. The streak continues. K-State wins this one 34-21. KU now falls to 6-2. After a bye week, KU returns home to Arrowhead Stadium on Saturday, November 9th, most likely the salute to service game, as the Jayhawks will host Iowa State. Last time, KU won a close one in Ames 28-21. However, I think Iowa State improved from a year ago, and I think they will edge out the Hawks, because I think Iowa State will travel to Kansas City well and fill the stadium to the brim. Give me the Cyclones winning this in a close one, 30-27. KU now loses two straight. They fall to 6-3. KU will travel west on Saturday, November 16th to Provo, Utah to take on the BYU Cougars at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Last year, KU won the game 38-27. But ultimately, with that Lavelle Edwards crowd, I think KU loses another game. This will be three straight. Give me the Cougars, 34-31. to KU falls to 6-4. and KU returns to Arrowhead for one final showdown on Saturday, November 23rd for Senior Day. And the Jayhawks welcome back to the Big 12, the Colorado Buffaloes. The last time these two met was in 2010, and KU had the most incredible comeback, going from 35 points down to win the game in the fourth quarter, 52-45. Things have changed between these two programs. Better coaches, better players, and a lot of momentum. KU with Lance Leipold, Colorado with Deion Sanders. However, I think the Buffalo's hype train dies in Kansas City. I think KU holds on and wins two straight over the Buffs. Give me KU winning this one in a close game, 37-28. KU improves their record to 7-4. and four. And the final regular season game for KU will be down south on Saturday, November 30th, as they travel to Waco, Texas to take on the Baylor Bears. The last time these two met was in 2022 in Waco, and Baylor won the game by 12, 35-23. However, I think things will be different, and Dave Aranda's job basically gets lost here. I think KU pulls out a victory and beats the Bears for the first time since 2007. Give me Kansas winning this one 33-20. KU finishes the regular season 8-4. In conclusion, I believe the Jayhawks will finish the 2024 campaign with a record of 8-4, and four, including a 5-4 and four record within the Big 12. Ultimately, those games that they lose will cost them dearly for a Big 12 championship and even a college football playoff appearance. But this still is a great season for KU. As you know, they've been in the bottom feeders of the conference for almost 15 years at this point. An 8-4 and four record isn't going to kill you. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Also, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and push that notification bell. Tell your friends about these videos, and I should see you again when the next one comes out. But until then, have a good day. Never bring exact answers to the Fieldhouse. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.